Hi everyone, it's Rachel Veron with our sixth and final video blog about requirements in software. Um, requirements are very important in software development. It contributes significantly and requirements can include things like user requirements, software requirements or system requirements and facility requirements. Um, the reason we find out requirements is because it's why we build a system. Without requirements, why do we even build a system? So for example, um, I know I talk about my work a lot, but <laughs> I work in healthcare too, but we're implementing Cerner as a new system and we use a system called Medilinks right now. And the reason why we're getting rid of Medilinks is because the system is slow. When there's too much people on it, it crashes. Um, charting takes forever. Um, our nursing staff, we work 12 hour shifts, but we rarely get off in 12 hours. They end up staying till almost 10 o'clock at night when the shift ends at seven and things like that. So it's very important to find out what type of requirements are needed when developing a software. Um, why does, or what does requirements do for software development? Requirements allow software, software developers to make a program based on needs like what we just discussed, such as like user needs and requirements, system needs and requirements, and facility needs and requirements. It is important to know what the users at the facility need from the system. So for example, we need a system that won't crash when there's not a lot of people on it or when there is a lot of people on it. Because we have nursing staff, we have techs that chart on the computer, they chart vital signs, we have therapists that chart on the um, system as well. So we have a lot of people charting at the same time and even the doctors use it too. It is important to know what is required of the system, what task it needs to do, what functions it should perform and how much work the system can handle. So for Cerner for us, um, we should be able, like I worked as a secretary, so I should be able to put in orders, but I should also be able to pull up the patient portal if I need to as well. So that could be another example. And um, what does the facility, what is the, what does the facility need, sorry? Um, is it needing a patient portal again or an EHR or EMR? Um, how are requirements collected? It can be done via interviews, meeting, and natural observation. Interviews can be done face-to-face, -face, like one-on-one, -on -one, where um, the developer can pull aside workers and ask them questions on what their needs are or they can hold a meeting um, and then they could like, go back and forth on which requirement is more important which requirement should be fulfilled first and things like that and natural observation um, developers could come and see how users are using the system right now are they getting frustrated are they not using a certain function of the software that they could leave out in their new software? Um, is there a function that's very vital that they need to implement in their software and things like that. And they could also see like how quickly their old system is running and things. Um, test usability. Um, we learned about this before. Usability testing is when the user tests the new system or even the prototype to see how easy or manageable the system is to use. The system should also motivate the user to use the system and we learned this as well too. Um, I know my doctor hates online charting and he hates using like Medilinks and I'm pretty sure he'll hate using Cerner too because he's been a doctor for like over 30 years and he's the type that he'll write an order in a chart and he'll just hand it off to you and he's out the door. He does not want to sit down on a computer and chart and write progress notes. He scribbles his progress notes pretty fast in the chart still, but we get on him to input the progress note in the computer as well. So um, the system should also, like I said, motivate the user by being very easy to use. Um, it is used to find issues with usability and um, it can also be called the user experience testing. And as you can see in this picture, um, usability contains a, a easy design, 
it is very efficient to use, and then I use, it leaves the user satisfied. Um, how to test usability? There are these um, five steps. The first step is to plan, and um, it is important to assign users, and then I'll talk about the recruitment step. But assign users or participate, participants to test certain functions. So one user could test the speed of the system. Another user could test um, how quickly it takes to log into the system or log out, or how long it takes to get to the patient portal, like how many steps it takes to get to the portal, things like that. Second step is to recruit the users. And um, recruitment, they can use users who actually work at the facility, or they could use people who have similar positions outside of the facilities. Um, I believe that they should do both because, again, you could test and watch how the workers in the actual facility, facility work with the system and how they react to it and things like that. But then I feel like they might also be scared to, like if they find an issue, they might be scared to talk up. Like I know I might be scared if I don't like Cerner because I feel like they took so long developing it. So you may feel like you can't tell them, oh no, I don't like it, things like that. So just to avoid some bias and things like that. Um, the test phase is number three and this observes how the users use the system. Fourth is to analyze the, finding, the findings, and this um, gives recommendations on improvement. And then the fifth and final step is to report the findings to the developers so they can work on the improvements. And then that's my presentation. I didn't use any outside source because we used everything. We learned everything of this in class. Thank you.